<laughs> and those are the things that you can't have. October Red, I'm here with what I will say is probably one of the most bubbliest characters I've met for like a debutant and someone that's embarking on their professional career. Always got a smile on your face, whether you're in the ring, out the ring, on the main stage. Welcome guys to Francesca Hennessy. Oh, thanks for having me on again. But, yeah, no, I, I always love to smile because, you know, this is what we're paid to do. This is what I love to do. So a lot of people don't get to do what they love for their job. So I like to smile and show people that I am grateful to be here and I've put in the work to be here as well. So I've got to get that feedback because I wasn't there for your Bournemouth fight, your second fight. Talk to us about that fight. Any lessons learned in your second fight? Yeah, definitely. She was a tough girl and... I believe I came out a bit too far. I could have pressed the stoppage a bit more, but look, I'm not, I'm not looking for it. If it comes, it comes. And yeah, me and Brad have just been working on that distance, not coming out in straight lines too much, coming around the sides a bit more. There's always something to learn, isn't there? So yeah, I'll learn and I'll keep getting better with it. What's it like, you know, when you go there and you stop your first opponent and then your second opponent is a bit more tougher? As like, you're not a debutant, but as somebody that I say is a rookie, yeah. Does that do anything to your mindset when you're in there? You're like, why isn't why isn't she getting out of there yet? Do you know what? It's it's one of those things. It's like the stoppages are exciting, aren't they? So I do want to keep bringing them. But as I said before, even if I don't stop people, I believe I'm quite an exciting fighter to watch. I'm, I've got fast hands. I do have a lot of power behind them shots. I'm quite flashy at some point. So yeah, I think I, I think the stoppages will come because I've, I do have a lot of power behind that backhand. But, yeah, if they don't, then I believe I'll still entertain the fans, definitely. Speaking about entertaining the fans, you are careful. You don't want him walking behind you. Johnny! <laughs> I think he needs to be put in a cage. Anyway, you're back on Saturday, fight number three on a really good card, a domestic that I think is going to be a show stealer. Talk to us about that fight. Wow, I'm so excited to see that fight. You know, I know both boys, they're both great, both so lovely and also great fighters on top of that. So I've been, actually I've been around Dan Aziz, um, he's been sparring Callum Simpson down my gym. So I've been seeing that, they, they, they're both looking great, Callum and Dan. Um, but yeah, I, I like Josh as well, I love both of their style. It's such a hard fight, I couldn't, I couldn't pick a winner at this point, I don't think. I think everybody's kind of saying the, uh, the same thing. The only thing that I think burdens Joshua Boatsy is probably he's got less activity than Dan Aziz. But when you look at it, styles make fights. You've got the, you know, the, the Olympian versus, you know, the one that's come up through the small horse show, the one that hasn't got all the medals and the glitz and the glamour. You will know that because that's like the graft, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Look, like, Dan, he's come through a very, very hard way, hasn't he? And uh, you've, you've got to respect him so highly for that. He hasn't, come, he hasn't just, you know, come on the shows. But neither has Joshua Watson, you know, he was an Olympian for a reason. But, yeah, you have got to respect Dan for that. He keeps pushing. He really, really wants it, doesn't he? So, yeah, I think on the night it just comes down to who wants it more. But it's great that both boys have made this fight because this is what we need. We need domestic clashes where everyone's intrigued in, not these fights that no one really cares about. This is what we need for boxing, definitely. I totally agree with you. Then we've got, obviously, I'm going to talk about Caroline Dubois, one of my favourites as well. Uh, aggressive, aggressive girl. Talk to me about her fight and well, how do you think that's going to go? Oh my God, he's here again. That's it. Move out of the way. Keep yourself safe. <laughs> oh no, Caroline's a great, great fighter. And with Caroline, I think she's got that in her where she, she can knock anyone out. I believe that that's what she's like. So um, I think this fight could end, definitely end in KO. But the girl she's got in front of her is very tough. We can't count her out at all. She's very tough. You know, she's going to come. She's going to try win. So it'll be a very interesting fight to watch. But I believe Caroline win by, by KO, definitely. Another flashy fighter like yourself on the card is young Ben Whitaker, the light heavyweight that's, that's chasing in the footsteps of the two that are headlining the card. Talk to me a little bit about him because you, you're, you can be flashy. You're, you've got that kind of style. He may show bolt in the ring, but the, to me, I've seen him spar and that's just something that comes naturally to him. But when you see like, the likes of Ben Whitaker, silver medalist talk to us a little bit about him and how you find his style and why should the fans warm to him do you know what i like ben's style a lot as he said when he's showboating and stuff you know he's he's making the, the guy like it's, it's a feint basically but with showboating do you know what i mean so i like ben's style and on top of that he's 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 actually a really humble person outside the ring he's not he's not that's just his style that's just how he fights so 
I think people should like him because he's exciting. He's not your normal fighter who's just come in there to have a ding dong. He's in there to fight and entertain. So I think love him or hate him, he's entertaining the fans, isn't he? So that's how I feel about him. And we can't leave this show without obviously talking about yourself, your opponent. Talk to us a little bit about this opponent, like the matchmaking, why it's a good fight for you, and what do you think you'll learn from this fight? Because at this stage, all fights, they're learning, aren't they? Definitely, you know, she's a very tough girl. She's been in with some, some great oppositions. She's gone a lot of rounds of opposition. She's tough. She's got, I think she's got a couple KOs on her record. So she's tough, she's coming for it. She's got, I think she's had 10, one five, drawn one something like that but yeah she's gonna she's not gonna be one of these people who's coming to lose she's gonna come to have a fight so i'm expecting her to come at me and yeah whatever she brings i believe i'll beat at this stage of my career definitely and you are keeping active already out again talk to us about the importance of activity yes you're getting paid but you're also getting you're learning on the job you're out there and sometimes you might see other fighters you know the smaller horse shows when the show collapses that don't have that opportunity but being involved in a promotional company that's given you that opportunity to be active? Oh, do you know, I'm so grateful to be in the position I'm in. Like, uh, all the, like, uh, you've got to give credit to these fighters that keep going when their fights get cancelled on small holes. You've got to give them so much respect and their drive they've got, you know. But yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky to be on these shows, but I also do put, on, put in the work as well, you know. I know some people might think I've been giving it because of my dad, which probably was a leg up, but I proved that I'm meant to be at this level, so. Yeah, it's, it's a hard one in that sense, you know, I, I feel for the people that that fights fall through and things like that, but yeah, it's great to be on a platform like this and that's why I'm smiling because I'm so grateful to be in this position, definitely, I'm blessed. So. Listen, my mum always used to say to me, I might need help getting in the room, but when I get in there, I can stay in there and that's exactly what you're doing. Exactly, yeah, exactly that, look, my, my dad's, you know, he's... I'm so, I wouldn't want anyone else around me than him. He's such a great, he's the most loyal man on the earth. And on top of that, he's my dad, you know. So um, we're a great team. And yeah, he, he did, he got me the leg up to be here. But as you said, I've, I've performed under the bright lights and I train very, very hard to be here. So yeah, I'm taking it with both hands. A couple of people have messaged me and they said that they really like your presence. I've had DMs from the last conversation that we had. So it's good that you're making that impression. So listen, I just wish you all the best. Continue to put that work in, continue to put that bright smile on our TV. And until the next time, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, Francesca Hennessy. Can I just say one thing as well? I just want to thank you because I think you're such a great in interviewer. You bring a great presence as well. I know you're laughing, but I think you bring a great presence and it's great, it's great to be around. So definitely, but yeah. I'm blushing, everybody. I'm blushing. October Red, Francesca Hennessy, stay ready.